Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that uh, first part. Uh, that was a really, really awesome bookstore in uh, central Wyoming. It's literally in the middle of nowhere. It's not near any big towns, any, uh, you know, as big as towns get in Wyoming. Um, it's not really near, not really near any towns. It's just literally a barn in, uh, you know, the middle of nowhere. Uh, there are sheep outside. They also sell egg eggs there. Um, it, but, I mean, the selection of books is just insane. They had a ton of, they had a lot of stuff I had heard of. They had, um, uh, they had the books I'm going to haul right now, uh, but they also had, um, you know, they had a bunch of fiction authors that I know Jason, uh, of Old Booth Chapter and Verse has been talking about. They had, like, a Tim Winton, um, they had, you know, Vladimir Nabokov, they had, uh, they had biographies, um, they had, uh, religion books, they had a bunch of books by C.S. Lewis, um, they had they had a really generous poetry selection, uh, which is uh, most of what I'm going to be hauling. Um, every in fact, every book I uh, I'm going to be hauling I uh, took from the poetry section. Uh, just because uh, I decided when I went in, because I got so many books in that other other haul with Jason, um, I needed to just pick books that I knew that I would read, that I would want to read. You know, the next week or the next day. You know, just books that you know are. Uh, on my bucket list, sort of. Um, not books where it's like, oh, this seems like it might be cool, maybe I'll just grab that. Not, I decided I could not do that after the haul from uh, the other day. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, I um, I just, I grabbed some books from there. I also had a lovely conversation with the uh, one of the two owners of, of that bookstore. Um, her name was Linda, I can't remember her last name, but uh, her partner, Polly, is uh, is the other one who wasn't there that uh, today. Um, she Polly is actually the one, uh, Linda told me that Polly is the one who usually sort of runs the book selling part of it, and um, Linda is more of uh, the farmer one, because they also have uh, chickens and, and sheep out there. Um, so she takes care of more of the, the house and the, and the sort of farming aspect, and then uh, Polly is the bookseller one. Um, but I had a lovely conversation with Linda. She's she's great. I really want to return. I actually actually took their business cards, so I have their phone number, so I could, uh, yeah. Anyway, call and uh, talk to them. Actually, she did. I did ask Linda about like how they got into book selling, and uh, she told me to give Polly a call if I wanted to talk to her about it, just because I I am kind of curious about how how people get into book selling. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, so I thought I would just do a very small haul. Uh, I'm going to name this haul after a very small uh, prehistoric rodent, which I, I have not looked up the name of yet, but it, it will be um, will be in the title of the video. So yeah, I got five books, all poetry or poetry related. Um, but the first two are uh, very, very, uh, or no, three of them are very well-known names, but, um, uh, or well, no, four of them are very well-known names, and one is super obscure. Um, but the first one is uh, William Butler Yeats' uh, Selected Poems, uh, edited by Norman Jeffers. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's a slim, a slim selection. Um, it's just over 200 pages. It has some end notes, which is nice. Um, but yeah, I had a selected volume of William Butler Yeats years ago, and I could kick myself for getting rid of it. Um, but now I have another, and uh, yeah, there, were, there was also a copy of his complete poems. Um, but I find it hard to... I find it hard to read through complete poems of poets, as, I've, as I think I've said. I can't start at the beginning of the complete poems of so-and-so and work my way to the end. I, I just can't work. Poetry doesn't work like that for me. I have to sort of flip through and pick poems that uh, strike my fancy and just re read those. And uh, what I tend to do is I tend to just return to those poems that strike me and not read more. So I tend to not finish reading complete poems, uh, but a selected uh, volume, uh, of the poet's entire oeuvre, uh, might be something that I actually have a chance of reading, uh, in its entirety, uh, although I won't put that pressure on myself to do so, but still, I needed, uh, Yates for my library, because, uh, he is a favorite, and he's, he's brilliant, so, yeah. Um, and next one is a bit different, um, this is, uh, Selected Poems of Ezra Pound, uh, and, um, yeah, so again, just a nice slim selection, um, and uh, they also had uh, the Cantos by Ezra Pound there, but I didn't want to commit myself to that huge. The Cantos are d gigantic uh, poem that he wrote, uh, and I didn't want to commit myself to that kind of uh, that kind of insanity. <laughs> um, but this is just a selection. 
And I've, uh, Ezra Pound is not, he's, he's a poet I haven't really been a big fan of. Um, I have, I have said that, um, he's overrated, I don't like him very much, um, and, uh, but I have read a couple of his poems in recent months that I kind of thought were interesting. I kind of liked them. Um, and, uh, on my drive through Wyoming, I was listening to, uh, a lecture about Ezra Pound's poetry by Langdon Hammer, the author of the James Merrill biography I'm reading. And, um, and yeah, it was just, it was super interesting, and so, uh, I thought I would give Ezra Pound another try. Um, because he is such a huge name and so important, and because, again, I, I read some of his poems and thought that they were interesting. So, I thought I would give him an, another shot, and, um, you know, I, even if I don't end up, even if Ezra Pound doesn't end up becoming a favorite, um, if I can find a couple of his poems that I do love, then that'll be, you know, two or three poems that are great that I have in my life that I didn't have before. Um, so, yeah, anyway, I will be able to do that now. Next, uh, I'm gonna... So, um, next is, uh, another volume that I, uh, I had before and got rid of, again, could kick myself for getting rid of it. Um, this is the selected poems of Anne Sexton. And, uh, I used to have a complete poems of Anne Sexton, and again, got rid of it. Again. Kick me. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, it's just, it's a nice selection. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I love Anne Sexton. She's one of my all-time favorites. One of the first poets I really did a deep dive into her work, uh, with, um, and, uh, yeah, so I just needed a volume of her poetry, and again, uh, I like the selected volumes now just because I know I'm never going to make my way through the entirety of a complete poem, but I might have a chance of actually finishing this volume. And, uh, since this probably includes all of her best poems, it includes all my favorite poems by her, I figured that this is, this is good enough for me to have, and if it's sometime down the line I, like, really want to read the rest of Anne Sexton's poetry, I can go by the complete poems. And same with the Yeats, and, and, and Ezra Pound, if that, if that becomes a thing, with, I somehow doubt it, but perhaps. Um, so yeah, Anne Sexton, I'm really glad to have this, um, and then next is, uh, it's not poetry, it's, uh, but it's a collection of essays by a poet. It's, uh, Upstream by Mary Oliver. And yeah, I th these are uh, just a collection of essays about, uh, nature and her relationship with nature. And, um, yeah, I love Mary Oliver's poetry, and I have not yet read any of her prose, so, uh, I, I think I, I'm suspecting I'll really like these. Um, and, uh, yeah, and it's a slim thing, and I think I'll really enjoy it. Um, and, uh, yeah, and it's been just a long time since I've read anything new by Mary Oliver, because... Um, I read, like, I read a, uh, new and collected poems of hers, uh, that had a ton of poems by her, so I kind of felt satisfied, but, uh, yeah, it'll be nice to get a change of pace reading her, her prose. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then finally, we have the really obscure one that I found. Um, and there's a specific reason why I grabbed it, and I, I think that this is a great find. Um, and this is the kind of thing I think you would find at this sort of bookstore, this sort of obscure book, um, that no one really reads, um, but, uh, you know, you can discover and nerd out all over all, the, all you want, but it's, um, the cover doesn't tell you anything, but it is the Collected Poems of Eleanor Wiley, um, who is a, like, a mid-20th century poet who was, I think, pretty famous in her day, but is not really read anymore. She's sort of fallen into obscurity, um, but she primarily wrote sonnets, uh, but she wrote, she wrote very traditional rhyming, rhymed, uh, you know, uh, verse in meter. Um, and I just, I, I checked before I grabbed it, and I, I read a couple of the poems, and I really liked them. Um, and yeah, she, she seems, she comes off in the few poems I read as a very, uh, easy poet, a very simple poet, but, uh, very beautiful. The poems I read, I, I, I loved. Um, and the reason I knew of Eleanor Wiley is actually because, uh, Langdon Hammer discusses her in his biography of James Merrill, uh, because Eleanor Wiley was a favorite of James Merrill's. Um, and yeah, Langdon Hammer talked a bit about her and, uh, how obscure she is now, but, uh, it was, she was important to James Merrill, and, uh, I'm sort of really trying to, uh, take notes on what authors James Merrill liked, uh, so I can read them. Uh, so, and, uh, like, you're not gonna find Eleanor Wiley very many places, because, again, she's kind of fallen into obscurity, so this seemed like a like a once-in-a-lifetime find, I think, um, you know, just, and it's like, it's old, you know, it is a little tattered, but it'll hold together for a while, I think, um, and, uh, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to reading this. I'm really looking forward to reading all of these, actually, uh, yeah, even the Ezra Pound, I, I'm really looking forward to sort of giving him another shot, and, uh, yeah, anyway, um, so I think, uh, what I will do for the rest of the evening is, um, with read, uh, I will read from these volumes some poems. 
um, just by myself in my hotel room. By the way, I <laughs> I didn't mention that I uh, left uh, Kelly and Jason's uh, house t earlier today. I um, I came to Utah to um, actually I came to Utah to see uh, the grave of a very close friend of mine who committed suicide a few years ago, and I wanted to visit his grave by myself and uh, to pay my last respects because I didn't quite have the chance to. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I stopped at his grave, I talked to him a little, and I read a few poems out as well, and read a little bit from the Bible to him. Um, but that that's why I'm in Utah, and uh, why I kind of had to leave uh, Kelly and Jason early, because I wanted to take care of that. Um, but, uh, but I think Kelly and Jason, I think I will be seeing them again. Um, and uh, yeah, so again, as always, with Halls, uh, give me your thoughts if you have, if you uh, know of any of these poets and these books. Um, and I hope you enjoy the first part of this uh, video. I actually haven't edited edited it all together yet, so I'm not sure how it's going to turn out. So I hope it's good. Um, anyway, uh, I will sign off, and I will uh, talk to you all uh, later when I get back to my uh, regularly scheduled programming. Uh, bye, guys.